Hi, welcome back to Vintage Family Recipes with Belle. I'm making gingerbread cake today to continue with our Christmas theme. This is a recipe that my mom has been using since she married my dad in 1961. She actually received a set of cookbooks as a gift. It was called Modern Cooking or Modern Day Cooks. I will put a picture somewhere in the video so that you can see the books. And that's where she got this recipe from. At this point, we consider it a family recipe because we love it and we've all used it multiple times. I will say that you can make it with or without whipped cream topping. It tastes great either way. But if you don't like a lot of sweets or you don't like to use dairy, just leave off the whipped topping and just go with the cake plain. So I've started to pre-organize. I have my flour, my baking powder, my baking soda, my salt, my cloves, my ginger, and my cinnamon in my sifter. And I am gonna sift them all together into a smaller bowl. So it's all sifted together. I'm gonna move it out of the way. The next thing I need to do is cream my sugar and my shortening together. And then I'm gonna add my egg. Now I'm gonna mix in my flour mix. A little bit at a time because I don't want it to fly everywhere. I'm going to add the rest. And before I go any further, I am going to grab a cup of really hot water. I've boiled, in my, boiled it in my tea cup, and so I'm gonna grab that. Wanted to leave it on boiling as long as I possibly could. I'm gonna put in some of the, just a little bit of the hot water. The rest of the flour. The rest of the hot water. and a cup of molasses. Any kind of molasses will do. You don't have to use a specific brand. I know some people have a preference, I don't. Smell it already and it hasn't even started to cook. I want to get the bowl completely scraped down. Now this is the part that I find really weird. And I'm going to do it exactly the way my mom says in her recipe that she gave me because I've, I don't want to mess it up. So it actually says to grease the pan. Then it says to put wax paper in it. And then it says to grease the wax paper. No flour on top of that. Just grease, paper, grease. So that's what I'm going to do. According to her... It then comes out of the pan nice and easy and off the paper nice and easy once it's cool. And on this one, I trust my mama and her really old recipe. Sometimes I'm never quite sure and if I want to modify something I do, but this one, I'm not so sure I should. Now, I'm going to grease the wax paper. 
just need to sew orange routine, but okay, here we go. Spread it all around. Make sure it gets in the corners and that it's even. And it looks even now, now that I've got it in all four corners. I'm done putting it in the pan. I'm going to walk it over to the oven. You put the oven at 350 degrees and you bake it for 60 minutes. You might want to check it at about 50, 55 just to make sure that it doesn't get overcooked. It should bounce back when you touch it in the middle or stick a cake tester in and pull it out and it's clean. It looks perfect. Let's see. It is clean, clean, clean. It is perfect. So we're gonna take it out of the oven and let it cool. And then we'll take it out of the pan and we'll plate it. So it's out of the oven. It's sat for five minutes. I'm going to follow my mom's directions and I'm going to flip this out of the pan. It's supposed to come out super easy. We shall see. Oh, yes, it did. Okay. Pan is still hot, so I'm going to put it on the towel. And then it's supposed to come off of here really easy as well. Oh, it smells so good. Well, you know what? The oil and wax paper trick worked. I am gonna grab my plate and flip it over. Actually, no, I'm gonna let it sit like this and cool longer. I will not put it on the plate until it's really cool because I don't want it to steam on the bottom on the plate. So I'm just gonna move this to the side of the counter and let it cool while I clean up the kitchen. Thanks for watching. Oh, we'll be back for taste testing, sorry. I don't think you've ever had this before, have you? I don't recall. I don't think you have. Unless when you were little and we were at Grandma's <laughs> Christmas. I think I would like it more if I hadn't had... I think I would like it more if I hadn't had the molasses cookies first. Uh-huh. Because these are very similar to the molasses cookies. And I think I prefer those. Okay. But this is still good. But it's not too sweet. So if you don't like sweet desserts, this is a good way to go. This is not what I think of when I think of gingerbread. I guess that's because it's gingerbread cake. Yes. And I don't know that I've ever had gingerbread cake before. Just gingerbread. So okay. it's like that, that thin, hard, crispy, like what you build gingerbread houses out of. out of. Yes. And this is... A lot different from that. The taste is much less strong than the cookies, which I actually like because I'm not a huge fan of gingerbread cookies. I think they're a little too overbearing. It would be the molasses cookies first, then the gingerbread cake, then actual gingerbread for me personally. Okay. Thanks for joining us on Vintage Family Recipes with Belle. Join us next time when we make my grandmother's sugar cookie recipe.